Hello everyone, welcome back again to this tutorial. In today's tutorial, we learn about numbers, mass, and then arithmetic functions. Okay, so first of all, the rule for Julia is that the rule for numbers or mass functions in Julia or arithmetic functions is supposed to follow this format: the mass or just like every mass, and then the mass. That is the rule. So bracket or parenthesis, exponential division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So, for example, if you have a number like 3 and then 4 is going to work perfectly for you, it supports addition, supports subtraction, it supports multiplication, supports division. And then one nice thing that Julia also supports inverse division. Okay, so apart from this, you can also do exponential into the power and then also you can also support modulus. So that's quite interesting, quite nice about something that you can do in Julia. Okay, so concerning numbers too, also you can also have what we call bits. For example, so if you have a number like, uh, let's say I put it like A is equal to 3, right? And I want to find the machine code for it or in, how do I say, in binary format or the bit format. You can just do it bits. And then I'll put it into bracket like A. Oh, let me see a, right so, so it's going to run it for me so this is the bit format of it so i can do the same thing for if i have another number like let's see five so that is changing perfectly for us so that is one thing that you, it comes in both concerning the number also julia also supports as i was talking about the head mass and then the parenthesis you can also do all this calculation using this format you put it into bracket then see we have 45 and then we have 6. So if you want to add it together, you can just add it like straight away with plus. So you put a plus ahead of it, in front of it. Then you can support minus, support division, and then inverse divide, which is quite nice as I've talked about. It supports exponential, support by multiplication as well as the last one which is modulus so that means that 6 will go into 46 45 and then with the remainder of 3 so that's quite nice in julia so also let's move on to division functions so for the division functions for that we have two numbers like 4 and then 3 you can perfectly see it like this so it will work perfectly for you but this division is true division so for example if i have a number like this it's going to give me one the reason it's giving me one is that the normal division is supposed to be like this using the format you have it's supposed to be one to the power three 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 but it's running into the highest number above it so that's why it gives us as one here you can also do floor division which is also similar to the true division you can also do ceiling division ceiling division will add another number to it but this one is one, but in series it is going to give us as two, which is just like the true, like the normal format. Okay, so this is the arithmetic functions in Julia. Also, Julia also supports what we call remainder or model. So you can do a remainder like this, for example, like four and then three, or you can do it like modulus, right, and then four or three. So this is a modulus, this is a remainder. So if they have all their pe 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 peculiarities. See the English I can't speak at all. <laughs> okay, so let's move on again. Another thing you can also do in Julia is that you can also get the least common multiple, which is quite so if you have a number like six, five and then six. So I want to find the least common multiple of it, five and six. Let's be straight away. It's going to give us 30. So I want to find the least common multiple of Let's say 7 and 8, 7 and let's say 90, 680, which is quite interesting. Instead of you calculating for the whole number, you can just go straight away with this, which is quite interesting in Julia. And, that was, and one, one last thing about Julia is that Julia also come back with inbuilt functions for square root. For example, if I have a number and I want to find the square root of let's say 49 right which is 7 which is already inbuilt in it if i want to find the cube root of 
a number like 21 or let's say 27 I'll go with CBRT CBRT which is going to give us 3 so which is quite interesting so for the square root and then the cube root is quite simple we have we should have a function in both function for log logarithm so we have a number like 45 log this is a normal log like log 2 and then log 10 so this is quite interesting thing that you can also do in julia okay so thank you for watching if you have any questions you can put it in the comment section i hope you have learned something then please don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching and stay blessed